All right, go ahead if you don't mind. All right, so here's the side view of you right here. And this is where you have a slip. It's called a spondylolisthesis. It's grade one, so it doesn't move much, but it's slipped forward. And that's because you have a little broken bone. Hard to see, but it's right here. It's easy actually. It's actually easier to see on your CT scan. And then this is your nerve that goes down to your leg, and it's a little narrowed in that passageway. Uh, right, that little black dot, I don't know if you can see it, it's pretty small from where you are, I expect, but this is actually the right side. So this is, we're looking at your right side right here. The nerve above looks fine. That one looks okay, okay. So that's probably what I would suspect would be causing your leg pain. Uh, and then you've got, here's the disadvantage of what you have, is you have degenerative disc disease here, degenerative disc disease here, and degenerative disc disease here. So that's why whoever saw you six, seven years ago said you're going to be back, and that's probably true. You fuse this, you're going to put more stress here. This is actually a little worse than that one, strangely. Three, four is a little worse than four, five, and then two, three is kind of in between, and that's from your wear and tear over the years. Uh, you got a little disc protrusion right here at five, one, four, five, three, four, uh, which could be causing some pain. Uh, it's causing mild narrowing of your canal. Um, and then a little bit of narrowing where it goes out. That wouldn't go all the way. That would usually stop at above the knee, so that's probably not what's causing your pain. It wouldn't go all the way to your foot like yours is at times. So I don't think that's it, but you do also have a small kind of disc bulge right there at uh, three, four, right there, that little thing. So where did you, where is the brace at that keeps popping out? Well, uh, it doesn't really pop out. It hasn't moved in six years of any note. So it's right, uh, it's easier to see on your CT scan. I'll show you on your CT scan. Uh, and they actually showed it on my x-ray yeah you can see it on your plain x-ray or ct because it's bone so it shows up better on oh okay uh better on a ct than you're it does. telling me it ain't moving now well no it's not moving i mean again you feel like it's moving but it's not actually moving oh it hasn't moved in you, you have not moved in six years or however whenever your last mri was done of any note so i mean it may feel like it's moving oh but yeah it's not actually moving okay so it's right uh, let me zoom in so the brake is actually right here. See that little gap right there? Yeah. That's the brake. And you have it on both sides. So that's one side, and then you go to the other side. So you mean it's actually broke? Yeah, it's called a pars defect. It's a brake. It's been there for years. I mean, it's, like I said, it's chronic. There, there's the other side, right there. Why so this piece of bone is just floating. If, if you did surgery, this piece of bone is just going to be coming out. It's not attached to anything. And what caused right that? Just working? Uh, and there for, like I said, it's very well rounded. It's clearly been there for years and years. And you've even calcified the disc. You see that? You've calcified the disc yeah. behind it. And then you've calcified that disc. So you got calcified disc, calcified disc. These are all wear and tear. So that's the one we saw. Uh, so this is five, one, four, five, three, four, and two, three. These are also the ones that are, I showed you degenerative. So that's the disadvantage of you. If you fuse four or five, one, you put more stress here, 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 mostly at four or five. So, but these two are, that's why the fellow said, well, you, you might, you'll be probably be back in 10 years. There's a reasonable chance you will be back in 10 years because you have changes above right. that are fairly notable. So you're saying I probably will be back. I think it's a very reasonable to consider to, I would plan on that unless you make dramatic changes in how you operate and even if you do make those dramatic changes there's still a reasonable chance you could be back because like i said this one's already quite abnormal fortunately this one's not too bad it sees the brunt of it it's the one right above but that one's bad that one's bad i mean this one's not normal but okay i get what you're showing me there fully mm -hmm. the only the reason i'm asking you is it from working i'm sincerely asking you that so you my kids Chances are, the, I mean, we have back problems in my history of my family, but we all work like dogs. Right. But my three children that I have that are grown, uh, I'm not saying they didn't, they don't work, they do, but they didn't work like I did. Right. So is there a chance they're going to be better off than me? This is not hereditary uh, that you can tell. Um, the degenerative disc disease is to a degree hereditary, but I mean, you know, you've also done enough wear and tear that right. you could have 
done it. I mean, I, so I mean, I, I and you smoked a lot. You said you smoked a pack and a half a day for a while. So if they don't smoke, if they take care of themselves, then they're not doomed to this. No. Okay. Um, so obviously, what is your recommendation for me to do besides eat a bullet right now, which I'm I'm kidding. Well, um, your options are to fuse that. And I think that will help the worst of your pain. It won't help all your pain. You could have back pain from that, and you could have back pain from that. Right. Lesser that, but either of these two can certainly cause back pain. You could not have this at all and be here with bad back pain, that, just from your degenerative disease. That can flare up. Now, usually that flare up ends over, uh, you know, four to six weeks like it has in the past. The fusing this would be able to uh, decompress the narrowing, the foraminal narrowing, right in here where the nerve comes out uh -huh. and potentially help the, help the pain that goes all the way down your leg. The big operation like we talked about, you'd have a, uh, let's just show what you'd have. You'd put a screw here and a screw here and a rod and then the bone graft, the, the bone that you take out that's just free floating and lay it along the side to hopefully fuse over time. So that's called a lumbar fusion. Now that puts more stress here I and mean, I guess in turn here and here. Uh, and so that's why you're, like I said, they mentioned to you before that you would have a potentially increased risk of future surgery. And that's true. Well, I'm here. You know, I ain't, I'll be honest with you, uh, Dr. Jackson. I said something to him six years ago. I said, look, I mean, this hell, I was dying. I mean, I thought I was going to die six years ago, and I'm not exaggerating. Right. I said, why am I putting a Band-Aid on this now? I mean, I have suffered through Hades for six years. I haven't said I hadn't had good times. I have, but I always had to be like, oh, shit, i, I got to be careful. Well, if you do this, you're going to always have to be careful. For, so, a, for a different reason, hopefully not to get your back out, but so you don't wear all these others. So, I mean, it's not going to change that you've got to be careful. Hopefully it'll reduce your flare up of these bad episodes, but it's not going to reduce your, it's not going to get you back pain free. I mean, like I said, you could take that out of the equation. You could just as easily have a really bad episode of back pain from two, three or three, four. So hopefully, like I said, it'll reduce these horrible episodes, but that's just, you know, that could cause back pain. That could cause back pain. So you're not, it's not going to make you 20 again and able to do whatever no, you want without back no, pain. It's, it's going to try to hopefully, I mean, get you so you're not, you know, having to you roll around in bed and, you know, lie on your belly because you can't get comfortable, but it's mm -hmm. not going to, right it's not going to get rid of the fact that you've got degenerative disease, degenerative disease, degenerative disease, degenerative disease at three levels above. This is your worst level, but actually your degenerative disease strangely isn't as bad as that one and that one. Right. It's taller. You'll see this disc is taller than that one and that one. Yeah, so I can see the break right there in the bottom, and that's what's moving, I would say. Yeah. I, I, feel, know, you, I, I know you feel like it's moving, but it's not moving. It's been here for six years now. So, I mean, it may feel like it's moving, but it's probably not physically moving. Now, but yes, there's your break right there. Yeah, well, I mean, I believe you. I mean, something, let's put it this way. Sooner or later, it pops, something goes, pop, goes the weasel and the pain lets up. Well, you're describing a very similar thing that people describe with degenerative disease. Flare, these kind of episodic flare-ups of back pain that could be from twisting wrong or bending wrong or sneezing. So take this out of the equation. You could, like I said, you could present exactly like this with that and that. So as I say, fixing this is not going to get you to be back pain free and do whatever you want. You still have that one and that one that could at any point flare up. But okay. I, I think it's going to get rid of the worst of your pain, but it's not going to make you able to do whatever you want carefree without right so back pain. basically my so, activities are going to be knocked down to like you said yesterday if it if it shakes i forget how you're well, going to avoid heavy bending lifting twisting jarring yeah that's what you would avoid so like i ride a side by side a big high lifter razor and i use you know i go riding and going up and down hills and it's just asking for right they're there to go out i right. mean I, i'm not going to say you can't do it it's not going to paralyze you but unless you have a bad accident of course but i mean it's um it's just again you've got to choose your wear and tear uh 
routine day to day living, you don't have a whole lot of wear tear. Riding a, you have a razor, sure. Uh, heavy equipment operation, sure. Uh, you know, uh, fill in the blank, you know, whatever. But yes, you will, I suspect, regardless of what you do, this or not, you need to modify your um, activities. activities. Yeah, I mean, again, you're just, I don't say, it's playing with fire, I guess, but you're just, you know, asking for trouble. Right. I mean, uh, that's why I I'm said, asking. even if you fuse this, so you fuse that, that's fine. You take that out of the equation, but again, there and there, you're not. You're not, you're not going to fuse you from here to here. I mean, that would be silly. Right. Um, so. Okay, so in 10 years, I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to, I'm going to change. Okay, you're the first person that I have literally talked to in all this time that has told me what you're telling me now. Right. All I've been since then is a guinea pig or whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, an expensive one on top of that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and even though I do, you know, self, uh, you know, I still do my self uh, healing, whatever you want to call it, to try to give me some really, um, cushion. Mm -hmm. In 10 or years so, you know, maybe. So what operation would you foresee me doing, going through then? Well, it usually ends up an extension of the fusion. So <sighs> fuse here and then add here, add here. And here. Okay. So that's what it usually ends yeah. up. Yeah. Basically just domino. Right. Okay. That's the typical. Now so again. The, the and, bottom line is I gotta be smarter. Oh, I said regardless of what you do, you gotta be smarter. Or you're you're gonna just have right. continued episodic back pain. I mean No nicotine, obviously. So that's yeah, that accelerates that and that. So that's that's I'm, if you have a fusion or not, you gotta get rid of that. I mean gone. or if you're smart you will. I mean it's you don't have to get so yeah, and it's you just Go away. It's, just, yeah. it's not an option for you because it accelerates that and that, which obviously you don't want any acceleration of that. Right. It's Pretty not great right now. Self deprivation of ignorance. Well, it would be, uh, it, as they say, insanity, doing the same thing and expecting a different result. So that would be what you got there. Right. Uh, yeah. So they, yep, yep, yep. yep, yep. They haven't read your MRI yet. I don't know if it's done late or what, but it's not. Is that good. the result of my MRI? That's your CT. They've not read your MRI. Or at least as of this morning, they hadn't. Let's see if they've read it yet. And close that. All right. And no, I don't think they've read your MRI yet. That's what I was looking at when you walked in with my portal. Uh, no, it's still. Uh, I still don't have it. Open. Yeah. Still not read. No, I didn't see it either. So, but I mean, it's it's in there. It's just not been read yet. But I don't really. I mean, I'll look at the report, but I don't really. Well, care, I don't really care about the report. But I mean, that's fine. No, I mean, I don't, I'm not saying I don't care about the report, but I mean, I can read an MRI myself. So I understand. You probably know more than most of them in there. I I can do as well as most that read them. Yes. So at this point, I can get where I'm at. Obviously, it doesn't. I can see that right here in the bed because I'm dying right now. Let me tell you the truth. Uh -huh. um, oh, what do we do now? Uh, well, the Maybe. first thing we did is try to get your pain better controlled still. Let's see. My blood pressure shot back up this morning. I'm going to jack up your gabapentin. You're on, you're on gabapentin, but a very low dose. So... I'm gonna try to see if that can't get you a little relief. 300 milligrams. Except, all right. Uh, 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 yep, okay. Um, sign. So this, right now I just wanna get your pain better controlled. Um, yeah, blood pressure was 120 or 131 over 67 probably six hours ago and this morning it was 155 over 93 i think okay yeah it'll go up and down so that's the trend is overall down but yeah you're having a little here was really bad 180 something or 170 the high 170. Yeah. so it's never been that but yeah it'll kind of go up and down but the overall trend is down but yes and then of course your medicine wore off so you're gonna be worse in the morning oh yeah so that's not you're not horrible, but yes, it's we don't want you being 150 something all your life. That's not good for you. 
Right. Um, you'll, you know, but, um, let's see, where's your last one? One, 48 over 92 was the last one recorded. I don't know if they've taken one since then, but yeah. Just so that's, that's, you know, too high. We don't want you at 92 systolic. No. But it's not horrible. It's not like, oh my gosh, you're going to stroke out in front of me or, you know. But yes, it's, it's not where you want it to be the rest of your life. So, but yeah, you're, um, so right now we just want to get your pain better controlled and then yep. get you able to walk. Did you even go to the rest, were you able to go to the restroom yesterday? You said you were going to try to Yes, walk I did. Oh, How'd that go? Yeah, uh, besides the fact that I almost died, it went fine. You made it though, I guess. Yes, I mean, uh, I, 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 I succeeded in my goal. Uh, you learn what your pain tolerance is, because you know, I never screamed one time. Okay, well. So, so yes. right now the key is getting your pain under control. Um, and hopefully- Right now, I still can't walk. Right, and well, I, I, well you can't walk because of your pain. So yes, if we get your pain under control, I suspect you'll be able to walk better. Uh, let's see, order. Now, I will tell you this, I can be laying in the bed and I have no pain, not right now, but when we get it under control, Right. And then as soon as I get out of bed, within 10 steps, I mean, I'm okay until I stand up. And then it's like, I mean, it's like somebody just stabbing the hell out of me with a hot iron. Uh-huh. Well, we're gonna try a different pain medicine, see if we can get a little bit better. Yeah. What are you allergic to? Uh, I mean, I'm assuming, I don't know. After Sunday, I don't know if I'm worried to anything, uh, but Benadryl it used to send me, uh, make me high and make me have creepy in my, it would elevate my my heartbeat. Okay. But after Sunday, I don't even know if it's possible to do that anymore. Okay, what else? It says two allergies. Let's see, uh, Flexoril, okay. All right. I did not like Flexoril. Now, that being said, I don't know what caused it. I couldn't tell you. Well, we're gonna add, we're gonna change your pain medicine to something stronger, orally, and we're going to add a cape, add a teat to your back that can help reduce your back pain in that area. It's not gonna fix you, obviously, but it can help loosen you up a bit. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna try another medicine called baclofen. It's a muscle relax, a different muscle relaxant, not cyclobenzaprine, which you've been allergic to, uh, or listed as allergic to. So those are the three different things we'll try today. Change the pain medicine to something stronger, heat, and a different muscle relaxant, and I increase, I guess, four things. I increase your gabapentin. So we're trying four things right now to get your pain under control. <sighs> Okay. And then we'll go from there. Uh, other questions? Oh, well, the ultimate question is what's my schedule? Huh, that's a great question. I have no idea. I've already got five surgeries tomorrow. Uh, I operate on Monday, Wednesday, and not yet Fridays again, but they're going to open that up soon. Uh, so that's how they got figured out. No idea. Well, I mean, we talking days, weeks, months? Uh, I suspect weeks at the earliest, yes. I don't think days would be un unrealistic, I suspect, as far as like the week. Uh, we're getting down the week, that's the <coughs> So I have to say, you gotta get your pain under control. Uh, I have to get a prison insurance. Uh, and then, uh, set it up. It better and be a prison insurance or you man ain't gonna like me. Oh, I suspect they will because you have a pars defect and it's fungal disease. It's usually able to be approved. It's and for what it's worth, I mean, I don't know if it's worth anything or not, but we just switched to the best uh, policy that Humana offers. Yeah, and, oh, that's good. It may or may not matter. Like I said, they, they request two weeks to approve or deny any surgeries, so that's what they, that's their full lead time that they can say, well, we haven't made a decision yet, so. So when do you anticipate knowing my date? Oh, I, I'll be in clinic today. I've been in clinic. I wasn't here last week, so I haven't been in clinic in 10 days, so I'll be in clinic today for the first time, and I have to, like I told you yesterday, I've got this, we're trying to figure out, we've got a backlog of literally 60 cases just sitting at my desk, just oh, waiting okay. to figure out where we're going to put all these people, including multiple 
uh, lumbar fusions and cervical fusions and all that stuff. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to sit down with my. Now okay. they finally last week while I was off they opened up allowing us to do inpatient surgeries again. So I got to figure. I got. I got a lot of figuring out to do today. So. Well, you sound like you're going to be. I'm going to be busy the next. Several weeks. Maybe you can retire when you get done with all these. Well, except for the fact that I <laughs> lost a lot of money for the last two months. So uh, while we were not doing our surgery, so yes, I'll get back to even. I guess. How about that? Uh, well, no, I mean, there's no retirement anytime soon. Your overhead is atrocious. Our overhead is bad. I pay my malpractice a year is about seventy thousand dollars, and I've never had a claim. In How much? Seven. Seventy. Seventy a year. Six thousand dollars a month. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, well, then you've definitely not had a claim. Yeah, I've never, I've never had a, I had somebody make a, make a claim for a carpal tunnel that didn't get better, but it, it, right. I didn't make any settlement. So, I mean, it was a silly, it, they dropped it once the doctor reviewed it, so it never made it out of the person said, we're going to sue you. It's like, okay, go ahead. <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? I'm 52. Well, 50, 51, I'll be 52 next month. You've done well. I'm 57. I got, right uh, now I'm 85. Let's see, I've been here, this is my 15th year here. <clears throat> and I was on the path of the UK for four years before I came here. I'll pay you a hundred dollars if you cut my back open and fix it right now. Well, that probably wouldn't help you much. I mean, you you would get a distracting pain, I guess, but yeah, that probably <clears throat> wouldn't help you much. But. How about if you take a hammer and just knock the hell out of it? Now that would help you, you'd feel better for a little bit. Because yeah. <laughs> right now, that would help you. Yeah. Well, again, for about two minutes. You reckon you can get one of these pretty nurses to come in here and give me something? Oh, they can. Like I said, I've changed a lot of your orders, so maybe they'll, that might help. Maybe what? I said I've changed a lot of your orders. So oh, you gotta wait till they make it up. Uh, yeah, so that might, might be, maybe it'll help you better. So what is my... My schedule, you think here? You got to get me. Uh, obviously, got to get your pain. I mean, obviously, I can't send you home like this. So really, if you, if we got your pain control, where you're able to walk around, and I mean, you're gonna have some pain. But if you're able to get around with the the medicines, then you could potentially go home, and you know, obviously. Okay. But you're not able. Well, to I don't want to go home until I'm. I mean, I do want to go home, but. Right. Well, as I say, we got to get you. Oh uh, shit! No, I don't want to go home like I was. Or I'm, I'll be dead. Yeah, we got to get you. Uh, <sighs> Got to get you doing better than this, so we'll see. But again, we're not we're not there yet. So that's what I said. I tried four different things to see if we can get you feeling better today. But well, I want to tell you something, and I mean this, and I'm I'm not just blowing you know bubbles or anything else. This is the best hospital I've ever seen in my life. Well, that's good to hear. No, I'm not kidding. I I have never been in a hospital like this. I mean, you are top notch just well, because uh, you're. Appreciate that. Well, you're human, and I'm don't you know <laughs> I'm being serious. You know, you're just you take the time, and you're not just blah, 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 and walk out. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Well, here to get let me let me eat some lead and get it out of my life. Well, it's a good. You know, I know you, some places they spend two minutes with the patient. And that's it, and that's they look at their MRI and they say, I can't help you or I can't help you, and they'll, they'll walk out. And that's right. It. And you know, well, that's, that's fast that's, and that's convenient, but yeah, it's not good for the patient. I mean, am I looking? This guy's like, I mean, and then, you know, he did. He gave you, I guess, that in two minutes he gave you the summary, but like, okay, you're going to be back. Well, why are you going to be back? Well, you're going to be back because, you know, this one's not great and this one's not great. So, yeah. you know, he needs to take the time to show you that, but again. What is the typical, typical average recovery of this particular surgery that I'm getting? Um, it's about three months. So if I'm a good boy, uh, but, narcotics and then weaning off of narcotics off of that time. Yeah, I mean, I don't like narcotics, but I'm gonna love them then. Uh, you, they're pretty much a necessity for a while. Mm -hmm. Right, and even then, will the pain be minimum? Uh, it, it'll be a different pain. Oh, you'll have a different pain after your surgery. Will be worse? No, it's just different because, like right, right now, you have this pain that shoots. Hopefully, the pain in the shoots down the leg goes away really quickly, and it's mostly just the pain from the surgery because I'll be creating new pain, muscle pain in the back. But that pain will then ease. That's the pain we expect to go away, you know. The healing pain. Right. Not the but, it's, but it's painful. We do a lot of muscle dissection. I'm not going to sit here and say, it's, oh, you'll be better in two days from surgery. No, it's a, it's a pain. Most people in the hospital, two to four days after their surgery with pain, getting their pain tolerable. I'm tolerant. 
Well, then you may not be here four days. Well, I mean, I don't, as far as pain goes, I'm good with it until it's debilitating. You and may I, only be here two days then, but it's it's not one that you go home that uh, extremely rare to go home and say the next day after that surgery. No, I can I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's extremely rare. You don't see me bucking to go home right now, do you? Right. Well, let's say we're going to try some different things, but hopefully they help you feel a little bit better. So we got four different things on tap today to see if we can't get you feel better. Once you're feeling well enough to get around, you know, and tolerate it, then we can let you go home and then obviously get you back in when we can get everything all set up. But I have a traction belt that I blow up. It's fine to use. Is it okay for us to keep using it? Yeah. Sometimes it helps because it, it you can do you can feel it pulling the pressure. If it's uncomfortable though, you stop it, you know. But if it, it's not dangerous to use. Okay. It gets uncomfortable. You're just doing gotta... symptomatic relief here. Whatever is it helps you feel better. Is it Eight, eyes, tens. You're at everything you mentioned. Traction, yeah. pain medicine, gabapentin, fill in the blank. We're just trying to get symptomatic. Relief. Okay. Do I need to cancel my shot? I I don't think it's gonna do much for you. So I'm just well, it's fine. I mean, I, you can get it, but just, I mean, but no. They haven't. The first two didn't weren't like you got. Well, the sick. first one I got didn't do nothing. And to be honest, I could, I done told you the guy, I'm not, well, I mean, I, All right. I yeah. don't suspect it. it. It's certainly not going to fix your problem. So, I mean, yeah, you know. I ain't doing it. Yeah, so. Okay. I can do without another stick in my damn back. Sure. You like the fish? Yeah. Do you really? Mm -hmm. You need to come down my way. I got a 10 acre lake on do my you? property. You got any fish in it? Yeah. You got catfish in it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got 10 pound bass in it? I don't know. Close. We haven't caught one ten, but I don't care. You got so. a cabin sitting right next to it. No. Well, I got a cabin. You got a house sitting next to it, I guess. Do you? Yeah, it's, it's on my property. It's what? It's on my property. The lake is on my property. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I mine have is a cabin too. Next to it, but I got a house. We're uh, just off Lincoln Parkway. Oh, okay. Uh, go. I might know where you're at. Yeah, big white fence. You know where yeah. the big white fence is. You know where I'm at. Uh, yeah, I know where you're talking about. Uh, How many acres you got? It's 40. 40 acres? My daughter got that one last year. Heck yeah. So, and I mean, we get, we get, I know we got like 13 and at least 14 pound channel catfish. Mm -hmm. We caught those. I don't know if we got any bigger. You have any problems with river otters? I, uh, no, not yet. I've yeah. had one beaver. He only stayed, he didn't stay long at all though. Yeah, he won't bother. The river otters will come in and wipe out every catfish you got within a week. Oh my God, they did me three years in a row. Uh, I've never seen, I've seen one beaver, I've never seen a river otter. I have some muskrats. Yeah, muskrats will tear your bank up. You're yeah, dam. I got a big dam, so they haven't caused a problem yet. But You yeah. shoot guns? Yeah. Feel, uh, don't let the game warden catch you, but if you see a river otter, shoot him. you better take him out. Is there other than that? I mean, can you trap them or how do you get them? You can, well, it's illegal to trap them unless it's uh, trapping season. Okay. Obviously, river otters don't know when trapping season is, so they don't care. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> they something. wiped out nine years of me stocking my pond. It's an oh. acre, it's an acre pond. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had 23 pound channel cats in there. Wow. They wiped my whole pond out That's in crazy. one week. And I had some fish. I mean, I got good fish in there now. Right. But they did it three, yeah. three years in a row. Yeah. There you go. There's one of my, yeah, so there you go. That's the kind of channel cat we have. There you go. That's a blue, ain't it? I, I can't, I think it's a channel. I can't tell for sure. But you can tell me maybe better. That's a blue. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I got some blue catfish in there. That's a good thing. There you go. So, yeah, it's a decent crop. If you got, you say yours is 10 acres, how deep is it? Up to 21 feet. Oh, shit. You know, you could put a shark in what I'm saying. It wouldn't, but. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty yeah. good. It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's got 21, uh, 21 at the, near the dam. So. Fun, ain't it? It's a lot of fun. Yep, that's my hobby, fishing. Fly fishing, bass fishing, whatever, crappie fishing. You know, bluegill. We do, got some gigantic red ear. Yeah. And bluegill shell crabs. Yeah, I got bluegills in mine from here. Yeah, there's some big ones. Yeah, I mean, they're slabs. Yeah, Everybody wants to take them out and eat them. I'm like, no. Nope. I'll leave those in, see? They follow me around. There's one of my red here. There you uh, go. He's like that. That's how thick he is. They're just, yep. I mean, they're big. Do you eat them? Uh, I'll eat, I'll eat most of them in because I'm trying to get my bass bigger. 
But I, exactly. Uh, yeah, there you go. It's a big red ear, so it's a, That's a fish right That there. was on a plastic worm, five-inch plastic worm. I was fishing for bass. I thought I had a decent bass. It was that red ear. Uh, so, yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that. No, nothing wrong with that. You so. got grandkids? Not yet. Really? My kids are, I'm, I started later than most. I'm only, nah. uh, I was a kid when I had a kid. I was uh, 30 when my first child was oh, okay. born. So she, my daughter, I just showed her 17, and I got a 19-year-old son. But that's okay. it. I got no grandkids yet. And they need about four or five years. Yeah. I got a 19-year-old grandson and two six-year-old twins. There you go. That's our lake. Our big one. We got a little, we got an acre and a half lake up front. Oh, yeah. yeah. That. That's beautiful. You can't really see. If you drive by, you see the dam, but you don't see how the lake yeah, goes. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's a pretty place. We yeah. love it out there. Yeah. It's gotten a lot more valuable here because uh, all that glen. I just break it down into lots now and sell it for more than I paid for it because oh, the glen yeah. thing coming in. How long you owned it? Uh, I've been there seven years. Seven years. Seven. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, you got to retirement there in another ten years just off your yeah, property. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, if I just keep a hold of it, I expect it just keeps going up. I Since ain't... I said with Glendale coming in, I can break it down into twenty-five. One, it's twenty-five acres of grass and then ten acres of lake and there's a little woods. I can. Break her down into 25 one acre lots, tear my house down, and do just fine. You got a gold mine. So, well, we're, we're not going to do that though. But, no. but it's pretty out there. You love it. That's all that matters. Yep. You know, don't get me wrong, I like money, but the love of money is the root of all evil. Uh, I'm with you there. It's, uh, it's my vacation. So, a lot of my buddies have a vacation place, not vacation, like like lake cabins. Well, I, I never get away to go there, but this is my lake cabin. I don't really care. Hey, about, I don't care about the bass. I don't care about the boating. I like to fish. And, down the water so I don't, I don't need a big lake i just need a lake i can hang out with so <clears throat> but yep that's well my son just bought me a 22 foot quest oh that's uh, nice and it's out in the cumberland yeah. and then we're having a house brought in on a lot right above the uh, alligator two marina oh, at cumberland. Nice. and then i've got the camper set up uh 15 minutes away and guess what that was eight weeks ago. Yeah, there you go. That's Guess who ain't been there? Yep, you haven't been there. Well, we've been, I've we had a, I've, a, I've not been to Cumberland a lot, but I did, my dad and I went, I took him on Father's Day for, we did a striper fishing trip. Yeah, that was see, fun. that's what I want to do. I'd never done that, but it was fun. We took a guide, guide took us out and showed, I mean, it's, it's not something you just go out and try to do. It's, we mm -hmm. took a guide. No. We, we had our limit by 8 a.m. We were back at the dock at 8 a.m. with our limit, so uh, you only get two each, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. But yeah. Yep, that's my one of my hobbies. So I guess I'll hear from you. We'll keep working on it. Well, really, it's just getting your van under control. So if we do it today, great. I mean, you I, theoretically, you could go this afternoon if you felt, you know, if these medicines made a big change, you're walking around. No, no, no. I mean, I'll hear from you soon, I guess. Oh, I'll... yes, about timing of things, yes, if that's what you want to pursue. But, yeah, as far as, you know, potentially how long you'll be here, I mean, it's really – I. That's extremely variable. It's just finding. You mean something. today? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just talking about. You'll let you'll let me know soon when you're, I'm going to go under the knife. Sure. Yeah, I should have an idea in the next day or two. Okay. I said I I have to figure. I'm out. I'm not pushing you. I'm just wanting no, to. No, I just have a lot. To, <laughs> I have a lot of uh, finagling to do here. To I get out it. What I'm doing. So you're by yourself. Yes, I'm the only neurosurgeon here. You're busy. Yep, I'm busy. All right, I gotta go see one more before clinic, so we'll get yeah. out of here, but we'll make yep. those few changes and we can't get the feeling some better. I appreciate you. No problem. Thank you, sir.